Hi, I'm Lynn Swan, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers. On this episode of NASA Connect, astronauts and NASA researchers will help you learn why having the right ratio of rest is important. Students will construct a tool for visualizing fractions as they learn about rational numbers, all on NASA Connect. The right ratio of rest, proportional reasoning. How you doing? RJ, I'm doing fine. The question is how you're doing. You look beat. Are you okay? I've just been really tired lately. I even fall asleep in class. You know what? Today my teacher had to wake me up. You're kidding me. That's not good. RJ, what's going on? Uh, track meets and practice keep me pretty busy. And I've stayed late every night doing my homework. I mean, it's hard for me to get up in the morning and I can't seem to keep my head up during class. I mean, I'm beat. RJ, you know, if you keep going like this, you're going to burn out. Now, you know, have you ever heard of the term biological clock? Isn't that where your body has to be in sync? Sort of. A more scientific way of talking about your biological clock is the term circadian clock. Now, this is when your sleep period and your activity period are coordinated with the environmental dark and light cycle. The circadian clock acts as a master control to ensure that the various systems of the body, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and others, work together. Now, if your clock is out of sync, your health and performance will be negatively affected. Now, RJ, from what you're telling me, it sounds to me like your lack of sleep is affecting your ability to stay awake in class and focus. We've already talked about how NASA is researching good nutrition and exercise, remember? Well, you know, NASA's also researching sleep as well. Astronauts on the International Space Station work long hours performing critical tasks. A lot of attention is paid to their sleep schedule. Astronauts don't experience normal dark and light cycles like we do on Earth. How so? Well, in order to stay in orbit around the Earth, the ISS travels close to 17,500 miles per hour, or 27,880 kilometers per hour. The ISS orbits the Earth about 16 times every 24 hours. That means the astronauts experience a sunrise every 90 minutes. Now consider what astronauts will face when we return to the moon. Once the sun rises on the moon, it won't set for a week, and then it will be dark for an entire week. Get this, during missions into space, astronauts can lose up to two hours of sleep per night. Now, after a two-week mission of orbiting in space, they've accumulated such a sleep deficit, they are fighting for a bed when they get home. So you see, RJ, your extreme schedule has you facing a circadian challenge, much like the astronauts do, on a much smaller scale. Wow, I'm facing a challenge like the astronauts. You know, RJ, I have a great idea. Why don't you search the internet for some more information on the circadian clock? And make sure that your information comes from reliable sources, like the NASA portal. You know, speaking of NASA, I bet you could contact some NASA researchers and find out what NASA is doing in this field. Bet you could get some really great information. Okay, Jen, I'll get on it when I get home. Don't forget your homework, and please get some rest first. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll let you know what I find out. See you later. Okay. You know, lack of rest and sleep is an issue for many people. Think about spring and fall when we change our clocks. Do you have difficulty adjusting to the new time? How about when you go from your summertime routine to your fall school routine? Now, if you're like most kids in the summertime, you stay up late at night and you might sleep later in the morning. Do you have trouble adjusting your biological clock for school? A University of Michigan medical study found teachers report that 10% of their students have trouble staying awake in their class. Are you one of these students? Well, while RJ does his research, here are a few things you and your teacher need to know about today's NASA Connect program. During the course of the show, your teacher will stop the program and ask you several inquiry-based questions. This is your time to explore and become critical thinkers. 
And here is Derek with your first question. Our friend Norbert is from the planet Norbania. For a normal day, or a light dark cycle, is 24 hours, just like it is here on Earth. One day, he and his dog Zot decided to visit other bodies in our solar system on their space scooters. They visited Mars, Europa, and Neptune. Mars has a light dark cycle close to that of Earth. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has a light dark cycle of about 85 hours, and Neptune has a light dark cycle of about 16 hours. Norbert and Zot are from a planet with a 24 hour light dark cycle. So what are some of the sleep challenges they will face as they explore these other bodies? Teachers, now it's time to pause the program and discuss this with your class. So, how'd you do? We'll get back to Norbert and Zot a little bit later in the show, but first, let's see how RJ's doing. I checked the internet and found that much of NASA's sleep research is being conducted in cooperation with Harvard Medical School through the National Space Biomedical Research Institute. Right now I'm looking for Brigham and Women's Hospital. That's where Dr. Charles Seisler works conducting sleep research for NASA inside specially designed rooms. By varying the lighting over time, he's helping astronauts understand the sleep challenges they may face when they travel to the moon, Mars, or planets beyond. Dr. Seisler, what is a circadian clock? All living organisms have a circadian or biological clock. In mammals, it's located within the brain. This clock helps to synchronize body functions with the external environment. Through its connections with the eye, the brain receives information about the external light-dark cycle. By coordinating the body's biological clock with sunrise and sunset, the clock resets helping to synchronize the rhythms that optimize the body for daily living. Without light-dark cues, most individuals would go to bed and wake up later each day. Why is that? RJ, it's because most people's biological clocks are set to cycle with a slightly longer than 24-hour period. Astronauts typically lose two hours of sleep every night. Once they are seven to 10 days into a mission, their performance can be impaired as if they had stayed up all night. Can't you just catch up on your sleep later? Not really. In some situations, sleep loss can't be avoided, RJ, but it's something that everybody should try to limit. Our research shows that the body needs a consistent amount of sleep each night, particularly during growth and development. Take your case, RJ. Studies show that you need nine to 10 hours of sleep each night to perform your best in school and on the field. Loss of sleep also impairs learning and memory. So RJ, sleep isn't just necessary for brain development, it's also critical for body development as well. As you sleep, chemicals in the brain called hormones are released, which cause your body to grow and mature. Whoa! So if you're saying I sleep more, I'll grow more. Yes, the hormones that you release while you sleep are necessary for your growth and development into an adult. Other factors that can affect sleep are physical activity, meal times, and medicines. And caffeinated drinks like soda, tea, and coffee can really disrupt sleep. In addition to getting enough sleep, researchers have discovered that the color of light affects your biological clock. We've learned that sleep disruption and exposure to certain wavelengths of light suppress those important growth and maturation hormones. RJ, this is one of the machines we use to measure the benefits of the different wavelengths of light. Want to check it out? We found shorter, bluer wavelengths of light, like those we see looking at the Earth's blue sky, are much more effective for resetting our circadian clock. Now let's see what a Martian sky is like. Whoa, this is different. Longer, redder wavelengths of light, like those in the Martian sky, are less successful at resetting our circadian clocks. When we plan for future exploration of Mars, we will need to think about how the biological clock will respond to the unearthly color of the Martian skies. Wow, that's a lot to think about. Our research with the color of light may reveal unknown benefits to us. But RJ, here's the bottom line. If you get enough sleep, you'll be more alert, your athletic performance will improve, and you'll have faster reaction times. Maintaining a good sleep schedule, eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, and following an exercise regimen all contribute to better minds and bodies. They're the three pillars of good health. You have to have the right ratio between rest and activity to be your best. For someone your age, that would be a ratio of nine hours of sleep out of a 24-hour day. 
RJ, what does your schedule look like? Well, I get up at 6.30. I try to catch the bus at 8. Sometimes I'm late for school. At 8.30, school starts and I'm in the building until 2.30. Then I go to track practice from 3 to 6. I rush home, do my homework in my room. I eat around 8 or so, study some more and try to go to sleep around 11. Next day, I'm up at 6.30 and the process begins all over again. What about weekends? Well, I stay up late to watch good TV shows. And then I get up about 10.30. In the afternoon, I might lie around the house to catch up on some rest. RJ, you're not getting enough sleep. Could you help me figure out a better schedule that will help me get the sleep I need? Sure, let me work on it and get back to you later. Thanks. Any help you could give me would be appreciated. Thanks, Dr. Seisler, for that information. We look forward to it. Okay, students, let's learn a little bit more about rational numbers so you can determine your ratio of rest. Numbers can be written in different forms, depending on how they're being used. We are going to look at three forms of rational numbers, fractions, decimals, and percents. One way to write a rational number is as a fraction. A fraction has a numerator and a denominator. For a rational number, both of these must be whole numbers and the denominator must not be zero. The denominator is the number of equal parts you divide the whole into. The numerator stands for the number of pieces you are considering out of the whole. For example, Norbert is going to eat a pizza. Now the pizza is cut into ten equal pieces. He eats seven pieces out of the ten, so we can say he eats seven-tenths of the pizza. Even a whole number can be written as a fraction when you put it over the number one. Now any fraction with the same numerator and denominator is equal to one. And if you think about it for a minute, it makes sense. If Norbert had 10 slices in the whole pizza, that is the denominator. And if he ate 10 of them, that is the numerator. The resulting fraction would be 10 tenths, or 10 divided by 10, and that equals one whole pizza. Another way of describing how much pizza Norbert can eat is by using a decimal. To express a fraction as a decimal, we divide the numerator by the denominator. In Norbert's case, we divide 7 by 10, like this. We call this 7 tenths. Now, we can say that Norbert has eaten 7 tenths, or 7 tenths of his pizza. There is still another way to express how much pizza Norbert has eaten, and that is using percent. Percent is a special fraction that is always based on 100. We can express any decimal number as a percent simply by multiplying by 100. 7 tenths multiplied by 100 is 70 percent. Let's review. 7 tenths equals 7 tenths equals 70 percent. Now that you know how to express rational numbers as fractions, decimals, and percents, try this example. Don't forget to look for equivalent fractions, too. Norbert orders an eight-slice pizza and eats six of the slices. Show how much he ate using a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. Teachers, now might be a great time to stop the program as students work this out. Welcome back. How did you do? Norbert ordered an eight-slice pizza, so eight becomes the denominator. He ate six, so that is the numerator. Norbert ate six-eighths of the pizza. To find the decimal, we divide six by eight. The answer in decimal notation is 75 hundredths. Now, to figure out the percentage, let's multiply 75 hundredths by 100. Norbert ate 75% of his pizza. Now, let's look at ratios. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. Because we know that Norbert ate six slices of pizza from the total number of slices eight, we would write this ratio as six eaten to eight total. Ratios can also be written as fractions, like this. Six over eight. Now let's look at proportions. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. Let's compare how much pizza Norbert ate compared to how much Zod ate. The unit is a slice. Now we know that Norbert ordered an eight slice pizza, but Zot wanted his pizza cut into 12 slices. We know that Norbert ate six slices. Zot eats nine of his 12. 
Norbert's ratio of eaten slices to total slices was six to eight. What will Zot's be? That's right, nine to 12. To see if these ratios form a proportion, we set them up like this. Six eighths equals nine twelfths. Next, we cross multiply the denominators and numerators like this. If the answers on either side of the equal sign are the same, then the two ratios are proportional. Now that we know Norbert has been well fed, let's visit with students from Cole Middle School in Oakland, California. They're doing a classroom activity on decimals and percentages, along with some scientific observations on their sleep. Hello, welcome to Cole Middle School. We are about to show you a cool activity that you can try with your class. You can view and download this activity from the NASA Connect website. Our teacher gave us data sheets to collect information about the way we and our family sleep at night. On the data sheet we recorded when we went to bed, when we woke up, and how many hours we slept. Some of us also kept track of other members in our family. We collected this data for at least one week. We also recorded some observations about how we felt throughout each day. Using the logs, we made graphs to see if any patterns occurred in our data. Next, using the data, we figured out the average number of hours each person slept. Some of us noticed that younger kids in our families sleep a lot more than we do. We also noticed that some days we felt really tired and had a hard time getting out of bed. Next, we created another representation of our data called fraction wheels. Like our graph, these wheels showed how much of our day was spent sleeping. Write this portion as a fraction and convert this to percent and then decimal. To make our fraction wheels, we use colored construction paper, pencils, compass, protractor, and scissors. We drew two circles and cut them out. One entire circle represents 24 hours in an Earth day. Remember the length of any planet's day is the number of hours it takes to rotate once on its axis. Because there are 24 hours in one day, we divided one of our circles into 24 equal pieces. We used the vision to figure out how many degrees were in each piece. Can you think of another way of making 24 equal pieces? Next, we needed to make the slits that let us slip the two circles together, like this. Now we could see what fraction of our day was spent sleeping, and it was easy to see how fractions, percents, and decimals are the same. Some of us also researched the length of a day on other planets. For more information about this and other student activities, visit the NASA Connect website. Awesome job. Well, we've seen how Cole Middle School conducted the activity. Let's return to Derek's challenge, take it a step further, and see if we can help Norbert out. Oh, my hams are talking to me. Thanks, Jen. Okay, kids, you have learned how to set up ratios. Let's apply what we have learned to Norbert and Zot as they explore the other bodies of our solar system. We want to make sure Norbert and Zot get the right ratio of rest. On Earth, Norbert feels pretty good when he sleeps about 9 out of 24 hours, or 3 eighths of the day, a lot like you. But if he wants to get the same ratio of rest when he visits Neptune, how much should he sleep? First, you will need to find out how many hours are in a whole day on Neptune. Next, we need to apply ratios and proportions. Remember, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. In this case, we are comparing hours on Earth to hours on Neptune. The unit of measure is an hour, and a proportion is a statement that two ratios are equivalent. How many hours of sleep are needed on Neptune in order to create a proportion with the same Earth rest ratio? Teachers, now is a good time to pause the program. Let's see what you came up with. You should have set up a proportion that states 9 over 24 hours on Earth is equivalent to X over 16 hours. We use a variable X for the amount of sleep hours since we don't know the value yet. Next, we will cross multiply like this. Find the products on both sides of the equation and solve for X. X equals 6. In order for Norbert to sleep 3A or 9 24 of his day while on Neptune, he should sleep about 6 hours while on Neptune. Don't worry if you got this answer wrong. You can always try again. Wow. You know, six hours of sleep a night isn't enough to keep me healthy and performing at the top of my game. 
I know. Let's check back with RJ and see if he's found out any information on the circadian clock that might help Norbert in his travels around our solar system. Hi, RJ. I understand you need some information about sleep patterns in outer space. Yeah, I was wondering how you get enough rest with all the critical work and exercise you do. I know my schedule's full. I was wondering what you're learning in space that can help me here on Earth. Those are good questions, RJ. Let me see if I can help you, but first let me explain what we face in space. Astronauts probably experience more disruptions in normal sleep patterns than you do on Earth. The intense work schedule, unusual surroundings, cramped work quarters, stress and excitement of being in space can all make sleep difficult. Since lack of sleep can seriously affect performance on physical and mental tasks, helping astronauts overcome possible troubles with sleeping and getting enough rest is a top priority. In addition, the normal 24-hour pattern of light and dark that provides a time cue to the body's clock here on Earth is absent in space. On orbit, we experience 16 sunrises and sunsets every day, one every 90 minutes. We can't sleep 16 times a day to match the ISS day-night cycle, but beginning about two weeks before shuttle launch, astronauts begin to shift the time they sleep by hour intervals until they are in line with their mission schedule. The ISS schedule can be as much as 10 hours different from what they are used to here on Earth. In addition, shuttle crew members are also exposed to bright indoor lights at specific times. A controlled environment and program meal periods help reset their body's internal clock to match the schedule they will follow on their mission. So where do you sleep on the ISS? Well, this is an example of one of the bedrooms on the ISS, and here's one of our sleeping bags. Look, I know that there isn't a lot of space on the ISS, so I can't imagine that you have to sleep in tight quarters. But isn't sleeping on these hard surfaces make it tough? I mean, there's barely any stuffing in these sleeping bags. We don't need stuffing, mattresses, or pillows to sleep on the ISS. One of the wildest sights to see in outer space are astronauts sleeping. If we don't restrain ourselves, everyone just floats. Wow, that is wild. In the ISS, we're floating, so pillows aren't needed, but we use them to protect our heads. Also, since we don't have any restrictions, our hands float up and we could bump into things. So we use sleeping bags in our sleeping compartment to limit our movement. Still, most astronauts report that they actually sleep better while floating because there are no pressure points on their body like you might experience in your bed on Earth. Okay, so how do you deal with your tough schedule when you try to sleep? Sleep is one of our highest priorities. That's why we follow a carefully managed activity plan. We are active for 12 hours out of the day, working, performing experiments, housekeeping, exercising, and preparing meals. Two hours before our sleep time, we make sure we relax and wind down, getting our minds and our bodies prepared for sleep. We all try to sleep for eight hours and then spend two hours in the morning waking up. You know, brushing our teeth, washing up, eating breakfast. It takes about that long for the brain to be fully awake and ready for the rigorous day ahead. Sometimes we have to perform critical activities, such as space walks or docking maneuvers, that require us to be fully awake at a time when we're accustomed to sleeping. To get prepared for these critical events, we once again slowly shift our sleeping and waking times to reset our circadian clock. You know, RJ, there are other factors like temperature, noise, and light exposure that all contribute to how we sleep. Dr. Seisler's work on the color of light holds a lot of promise for us on the ISS and travels beyond. RJ, I hope our talk helped you understand why it's important for astronauts and for you to get enough sleep. It sure has. Thank you. I think this is Dr. Seisler. Maybe he has some suggestions for me. Hello, Dr. Seisler. Hi, RJ. Well, I've reviewed your schedule, and I have some suggestions that might help your situation. You need to be on a schedule more like the astronauts. At your age, you need at least nine hours of sleep. Plus, you need about two hours to wind down before you go to sleep at night, and at least an hour after waking to be fully alert. You also need to spend more time outdoors in the morning under the bright blue sky. Maybe you could walk to school instead of taking the bus. This will not only keep your internal clock in tune with the Earth's day and night cycle, but it will help you to get to sleep better the next night and wake up more easily the following morning. Here is the kind of schedule you might want to try. At 7.30 in the morning, wake up, brush your teeth, wash up, have a good breakfast, and walk to school. 
From 8.30 to 2.30 is when you're in school. 2.30 to 5 is track practice. 5 to 6 in the evening, you can spend time with your friends. 6 to 6.30 is supper time. 6.30 to 8.30 is for homework and studying. 8.30 to 9.30 is for winding down, reading quietly, relaxing to your favorite music, quiet time. And then most importantly, from 9.30 at night until 7.30 in the morning is reserved for sleep. Wow, I get a whole hour to hang out with my friends and I can read my comic books while I wind down. This schedule is sweet. Remember, RJ, because this schedule gives you the rest that you need, you'll get much more out of your everyday life, including school and study time. You'll want to follow the same wake and sleep schedule on the weekends, because otherwise it takes several days for your biological clock to reset. Remember, RJ, this schedule is designed for you and not necessarily what others might need. Wow. Thanks a lot, Dr. Seisler. And thank you, Dr. Dave. I'll definitely look into what you both recommend. And Jennifer, hopefully this will take care of my problem. Back to you. Okay, RJ, it looks like you got some great suggestions for getting better rest. I hope you use them. And you know, speaking of rest, what suggestions did you and your class come up with for Norbert? So, here's my challenge to you. How can you be at your best? Well, a healthy diet, proper exercise, and of course enough sleep, all work together to enhance your health. Now, what changes can you make to your diet, to your exercise routine, and to your sleeping habits that will allow you to reach for the stars? To help you with this challenge, you might want to watch the NASA Connect programs Better Health, From Space to Earth, and Good Stress. Well, that wraps up another episode of NASA Connect. We'd like to thank everyone who helped make this program possible. So until next time, stay connected to math, science, technology, and NASA. And I'll see you then. Goodbye for now. Hi, my name is Mary Sanchez. I work for NASA. I'm also a member of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, or AIAA. AIAA provides classroom activities and mentors for classrooms across the nation. We can help your students learn how math and science are used in everyday life. For more information on how to request a mentor for your classroom, please visit the NASA Connect website. Yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, say turn up, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, turn it up, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, turn it up, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, yo, turn up the ratio, I'm out of rhythm, man, I'm out of sync, my eyes open last night, I couldn't catch a wink, see in my world, you know I'm losing focus, can't get my head around all all the hocus pocus, dang, I like to play Madden, I got a pass, yeah. yesterday I fell asleep in class, I'm feeling like I'm unfit.